The grizzly bear is one of the most revered animals in America. They are fierce, powerful, and amazing to see from a distance. Bear populations and we're, we're decimated. There's no doubt about it. But that's not that's not the situation today. And we have more bears today um, than we probably have had in the last 150 years. The grizzly was put on the endangered species list in 1975. Many believe it is now time to delist the grizzly bear. We see bears in places that we haven't seen them since Lewis and Clark were here. It's biology 101. You know, dispersion of bears that far um, from what their core habitat is, it, it, it's an indication that the habitat's full and their only option is to move and find more habitat. And that's really the situation we find here. In. And quite honestly, the, the wildlife managers will agree with you on that and say it's time to move beyond having the bears as, a, as an endangered species and allowing us to manage them like we do all of our other wildlife. The science is saying the grizzly bear has met all the recovery criteria here. So why do we need to continue to close roads or manage to this certain density if the grizzly bear has met all the recovery criteria? This is where it gets a little sticky. The criteria for the Endangered Species Act is specific. There are five regions in Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming. The numbers exceed what is required overall, but in three of the regions, the bear numbers are still low. Those fighting delisting use those three areas to make their case. The Endangered Species Act was always meant to not. It's to ensure that we are maintaining these populations of bears that are endangered or threatened and things like that. Once it met those criteria, we're supposed to be moving that off the list. The reason some want the bear moved off the list is in some areas those bears are overstocked and are moving from their natural environment into the urban interface. Chuck Rohde served on two different governor's task forces on the grizzly bear. You know, they're all, all for protecting the grizzly bear, but those of us that have to live here with them, that's a total different situation and you know where I live in, in northern Idaho the grizzly bears are down low around the houses around in the farms and you know you start worrying about when you take your grandkids up just on the east side of Montana in the continental divide we had to build uh, fences electric fences around I think it's Shoto and Depuyer so around the schools because of the grizzly bears a certain time of year. Bears are very much in town um, in that wild and urban interface. And that's kind of the challenge. We have to find that balance, right? So how do we manage a bear population that doesn't have continual conflict with the people that have moved into the, into the same areas? There are bears right here, right down in downtown Whitefish. There's grizzly bears that have moved very close. Not delisting the grizzly also makes healthy management of the forest more difficult. There are rules about road use, bear security, and when harvesting of trees can happen. Thick, overgrown forests do not make the best bear habitat. A lot of these special interest groups and environmental groups, they don't have any more heartfelt love for an endangered species, but they use that as a tool or abuse it, as I say, to achieve other things, i.e. Uh, more wilderness, more roadless. The bear in this case is just to try to keep areas, you know, closed off to man or to, in most cases, opposed to, to timber management or forest management. We have uh, 120 direct employees and there's another 65 to 80 people that, that help support us, you know, whether it be contract loggers, road builders, people hauling our, our materials, um, that kind of thing. Paul McKinsey manages Stoltz Lumber Company in Columbia Falls, Montana. He says these groups find loopholes and take every timber sale to court and tie it up for years. We see a lot of litigation. Um, just heard this morning that something like 350 million board feet of, of timber under litigation in Montana. What people forget about is that 90% of that we win on, right? So it goes through the process and comes out as the same project that went into the, into the legal process. And, and so the work gets done on the ground, it's just really a delay tactic that brings a lot of uncertainty to our industry and makes it very difficult for us to make the long-term investments we need for the future. When timber sales are tied up, that not only impacts the health of the forest and wildlife, but also the health of the rural communities. You got to remember on Forest Service ground nationwide in Montana, particularly we're only talking about 20% of the acres that we can even consider doing any forest management on. 80% are in land use designations that are set aside for other uses, you know, and so we're really not talking about 
managing those lands for the growth of timber. It's only a small percentage. We're burning 10 million acres a year and we're only harvesting, you know, a small fraction of that, you know? And so, so you know, when we get down and we were, we're arguing over a particular timber sale or even a unit on a timber sale, it's kind of frustrating because we, we kind of lose perspective. What these groups forget is the public forest belongs to all of us, yes, you and me included. It is to be managed for multiple uses, not just the grizzly bear. We can't just manage for one animal. That, that tends to be the way that um, the issue is handled, is that single species management, which makes it so difficult um, to meet the, the multiple use objectives that we have on our public lands. Well, I'll, I'll say a couple things up front. The, okay. the Elk Foundation has long supported the delisting of the grizzly bear. It is not just the bear who is finding habitat in some areas harder to find. Elk and other species are in the same predicament. The way we see it and, and the way this has come about is, you know, I think you go back to the George Bush administration of the early 2000s when it was first proposed for delisting. And the people that were proposing it are the scientists with, within the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. They're, they're the experts. Those forests have become so overgrown, no sunlight to the floor. So the, the species of plants that are most nutritionally valuable to elk do not grow. Well, the danger is that you're losing your public access to be able to drive to your favorite, you know, look out your viewpoint out here. Some of the public access from a recreational standpoint, but also the community, the threats to community from the lack of active management. Private timber companies partner with the federal government to manage our public lands. They pay to do the work for the government. The more mills we lose, the more management is going to cost in the future. We've seen a lot of mills go away, and the primary reason they go away is lack of certainty in, in, in fiber supply. And, and so what that does on the, on the big scale is that when, when people want more lumber and there's fewer sawmills and supply and demand, price is going to go up, you know, so we aren't going to be able to meet the need of the future. We start losing partners, like our partners in Stoltz or Warehouser, that is a key element in our need to reduce this fuel hazard, the risk out there from a fire perspective. And it is a huge issue that people need to wake up to because it is, if we lose these partners, what are we gonna do? It's truly a wildfire crisis across the West. The grizzly bears being used to keep us from treating those forests that we really need to. The environmental groups aren't really fighting for the bear, in my opinion. Um, they're using the bear as a tool to promote their agenda. And their agenda really is one of a difference of opinion. They really don't feel like humans should be manipulating our natural environment, right? I mean, it's just a difference of opinion and the bear in the Endangered Species Act specifically provides them with a great tool in order to promote that perspective. So wait a minute. We have small groups deciding through the courts how our forests are managed. What about our input? What about our access? Perhaps it's time the public is heard on this issue. And we'd say, you know what? Actually, yeah, the, the bear is doing, doing well. You look at these large fires that are 100,000 acres of high intensity burn um, activity, that's not good bear habitat either. It doesn't have the combination of foraging and security and hiding. And these folks that are really the obstructionists, the special interest groups, they won't participate in collaboration because they don't want to recognize that you have just as much right to this land and your values have value as well. They just, they just, they just disagree with that. They really think that their point of view is the only valid point of view and they'll do anything necessary, it seems like, to promote that. The Forest Service wins, like I say, over 90% of their lawsuits they end up prevailing on. Because the bear populations are doing fine, they're just using that as a chink in the armor to get at uh, stopping active management. Where the grizzly bear is recovered now, we've got the numbers. So let's, let's move on, let's celebrate a success story. We brought that grizzly bear back and let's, let's manage them and put them under management, and which then falls back to the respective states. Rody says it's easy to make rules that don't impact you. It's easy to fight against active forest management when you live in the urban areas or a city. But what does the science say? What do the communities in and around these forests think? What kind of access do you want? And why are these small, singularly focused groups the only voices that seem to get the attention? The recovery plan has a recovery number in it. We're like two and a half times beyond that, right? I mean, all the evidence we see on the ground, the fact that we have bears moving in, into eastern Montana, all the evidence shows that the bear population has recovered. 